Hey, this is Alex Colazzo, the Maverick. And uh, I just want to let you guys know that it has been a beautiful uh, month of December. And uh, you're probably listening to this episode, which uh, could be January. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a great December with family and friends and all of that. And I hope. All of you have had the same experience as I have. Anyway, right now in Mavericks Dojo, we got an interview with, uh, I think you, you pronounce it uh, Kaisho, Frank Dukes. And, you know, I mean, whatever controversies might, might surround this guy, you know, anything negative anybody has to say. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, watching the movie Bloodsport with the rest of all you guys and this show is for martial artists so I'm pretty sure that the majority of martial artists are listening to this show have watched Bloodsport as kids or whatever teenagers and some of you might have even gone to the movies when it first came out in 1988 but uh you know I, I was always fascinated with uh you know like I wanted to find out who the real Frank Dukes was and of course he's been in interviews and all kinds of shows and things like that but I look I've always wanted to talk to anyone in the martial arts world that I looked up to as a kid and I or heard myths or whatever or you know stories of them and legends whatever and everybody comes with you know some sort of bad uh, you know publicity I mean Everybody talks bad about everybody and when they see you coming up somebody always has some something negative to say But uh, we got Frank Dukes on the show and there's a lot of positives You know to this man, you know, he's done a lot of great things and uh, Not too long ago on a post I had on Facebook uh, You know, I had a couple of guys, you know, leaving some bad comments about uh, one of Frank Dukes's uh, students and I'm like what is this? Uh, you know, just you know, this is what you get in the martial arts world. Everybody gets, you know, some sort of uh, bad rap or whatever. But um, we're going to talk about the positives. You know, Frank Dukes is the founder of Dukes Ryu Ninjitsu, and uh, he's up there. You know, and his system does work, and he's trained so many people. And uh, I believe, uh, you know, police and military personnel, and uh, whatever you believe about him now. You know, the man does know his martial arts. Um, I've seen him do, you know, some amazing things with his skills. And of course, stories of, of people that I know that know him personally that have told me amazing things about the man. So anyway, um, whatever. This is something that goes on in the martial arts world and it's gonna be a special show. Uh, there's a lot of things that he tells me that um, I wasn't aware of and a lot of things that were shocking to me and uh, I really like Frank Dukes I love talking to him I think he's a really cool guy um, and I hope to do future uh, future shows with him and uh, he's got a book coming out too so uh, I think it's called Ninjitsu is BS or something like that so I can't wait to read that book when it is released so anyway stay tuned don't go away and remember that you are about to enter the Mavericks Dojo. First of all, the title is Kaiso, not, not Sensei. Oh, so, Kaiso. Sensei, sensei means teacher, which could be anybody, an English teacher in Japan, just so you know. You can call him Sensei. A driving instructor is called Sensei. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. And, and, and actually, a martial arts teacher is actually supposed to be called O Sensei. Oh, Sensei. <laughs> which is different. But, it, you know, and. Just so, you, just so you know, if you want to use titles. But other than that, you can always call me my first name. It's never a problem. Really? Okay, great. Um, and what does Kaizo mean? Kaizo is the term meaning founder. When you've actually founded your own system, founded your own way. Wow. And that's, and that's what I, what's my title and that was awarded to me. Awesome, awesome. Hanshi really means, uh, it means the highest student. That's usually someone who kind of like takes over a system. Mm. But if you've invented your own system, like a you know truly your own system, a Kaiso would be the t is the appropriate title. And and you're the founder of uh, is it Dukes called Ryu. Dukes Ryu? Dukes Ryu. 
Yeah, and it's not like Duke's Ninjutsu, Duke's Taekwondo, Duke's Judo, Duke's whatever, you know? But Duke's Ninjutsu. Can you give me a little history on it? Yeah, basically, um, you know, Ninjutsu, first of all, there's no such thing as a ninja. Okay, that's, it, it's, it's a folk tale. And there were people that were shinobi ninjutsu who were, which is another term, which were the, basically the special forces of the, of the, of the army in feudal times. Okay. They were trained in how to do arson. They were trained in how to infiltrate, carry out reconnaissance. Pretty much what the special forces we see today, their mission, they're fulfilling their missions including working cohesively amongst civilian populations, blending in and doing what they need to do. So that's really what, you know, uh, a someone doing ninja is. Ninja is actually a term for you doing something like the jan- janitorial services, you being the janitor. Anybody could be the, a, a, the janitor or you know, a, 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 a driver, that's probably a better term, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, someone driving, someone we call them a driver, right? Yeah. You don't need a special qualification to be a driver. You, and that's the same thing there. So anybody fulfilling those kind of functions, that's what the term is. So now it's actually not a noun, it's an adverb. Anyways, the, po- the point is, it's used to describe an action in ninjutsu, the same thing. And, and, and the terms were shortened in, this, in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, in the early 1920s, 1910, somewhere between there. The most popular, earliest recorded person doing that is a guy named Ito Kengetsu. He wrote the first books on ninjutsu. And on these on the subject and called it ninjutsu because as they were changing from a warrior class to a mercantile society you had all these people who needed work and so they started offering these courses as a way of you know preserving the old ways of life learning some interesting hobbies etc cetera, etc cetera, you know and so that's how you got your your, your martial arts basically going on in the, in Japan at that time but uh, the whole art form itself goes all the way back to China because it's not even Japanese, contrary to what people have misled to believe hmm. by a group of individuals who profited by it by claiming, you know, they have exclusive lineage, that uh, anybody else is a fake, um, you know, that there's, you know, that this is some kind of secret cult and there's nothing really that much secret about it. You know, other than the fact that you had different families who operated at different times in history for nefarious means. Oh. Okay? Hmm. I wrote a whole book on this called Ninjas Are Bullshit. And it'll <laughs> be coming out, it'll be coming out, hopefully, uh, uh, I'm going in publication middle of next year. Hmm. So, yeah, I'll, I'll that's, definitely that's, get a copy. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it's going to turn the entire martial industry on its ear. Hmm. Because in that book, I expose the racketeering, the racism, and, and the manipulation of perception that has been taking place in the martial arts from the 1970s through the, night, the year 2000, 2001, till, till, until finally it, the internet became user-friendly, where individual people could actually start putting up the facts and, and actually putting up documents online where you could see it. You didn't have to be like you know some kind of programming guru to do that. You know. Now, you said the word racism there. Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah, racism is a big part of martial arts. I mean, if you look at Black Belt Magazine, you won't see from the years, uh, gosh, from when it was founded until it was sold, okay, to, I think, uh, Efren Zimlist, um, it, it, you won't see a single black man or uh, and very few Hispanics um, on on the cover of the magazine at all. They're never featured. I did not know that. Yeah, in fact, you know, uh, that's one of the things. In fact, I was in Black Belt Magazine for three months in a row until I found out I was Jewish. And then, you know, that that got squashed very quickly. And I was slated for the cover. And also because I was doing ninjutsu. And they were getting ready to launch this guy, Stephen Hayes. They made him, after two weeks of training in Japan, they made him like, you know, uh, you know, the Hall of Fame for ninjutsu. They actually were posing him the way they wanted him to pose for the magazine because they wanted it to look different. 
and uh, they built up this whole BS thing about the ninja around him hmm. and Hatsumi, you know, claiming that they're the, the last vestige of this line of ninjas, which is a lie because he had Jinichi Kawakami in, in Japan, who was actually recognized by the government, whereas Hatsumi is not. And as, as an actual practitioner and I can go on and on mm. and that all comes out in the book and I'm not trying to knock anybody but the, the fact is if you weren't oriental or white you know and male your chances of ever making a cover were slim to none the only exception is being someone like Cynthia Rothrock who who made the cover and uh, I think Karen Shepard made it and a couple other women that's about it Wow. You, know, you don't see any black men on it. I mean, look, think about how many black uh, champions there were. Uh, you don't hear anything about Victor Moore. And the reason is Victor Moore defeated Bruce Lee, and that was their biggest seller. You know, and they actually portray the story just the opposite. They say Lee beat him, which is not true. Oh, my. You know, they say Joe Lewis was undefeated when they're selling his books. Joe Lewis fought Victor Moore and lost. Fact, you know, 